heroes. We all have them, inspiring figures who push us to be all that we can be. These heroes can come in many forms, celebrities, political icons, religious figures, even family members or teachers. For me, these heroes could be found in comic books. Through comic books, I can experience endless adventures and allow my imagination to run wild. And I am not alone. Just over 10 years ago, comic books were a struggling, nearly bankrupt industry that had to sell off the rights to its most popular characters just to stay afloat. Now it's a multi-billion dollar franchise that regularly smashes box office records at the cinema, has launched hundreds of YouTube channels, and frequently sparks online debates between thousands. With over six million daily readers in the US alone, comic books are an integral part of modern pop culture, and their impact cannot be ignored. Comic books offer their readers the chance to escape from the mundane reality of today to the exciting possibility of tomorrow. And this applies doubly so to young readers, whose heroes are by far the stars of the show. Heroes like Wonder Woman, Superman, or Captain America embody all what we wish we could be, whether that's an uncompromising commitment to justice, unwavering optimism, or simply the belief in being a good person. It is these powerful allegories and embodied principles that attract so many readers, including myself, to comic books every day. My first introduction to comic books was years ago now, when an uncle bought me a video game based off the popular comic book character of Batman. From there, I moved quickly into the film franchises, fascinated by the realism-focused angle of the Nolan trilogy of Batman films. Then finally, I embraced the roots of the genre, the crazy, insane world of comic books, drawn in by the sheer possibilities for storytelling that now lay within my reach. I remember my first time in a comic book shop, issues and volumes lining every wall, being overcome by a sense of just wondrous curiosity, the feeling that I'd stepped into an entirely new world that was now mine to discover. I was absorbing as much of this world as I could whenever I could. But as I got older, and as I read, I began to feel like something was missing. I was absorbing as much of this new world as I could, but was struggling to find a character with whom I could relate to on a deeper level. And I still haven't. My heroes have been failing me. This industry pulls in new fans just like myself every day. But are the characters presented in this medium relatable on a deeper level? This is what I call inclusivity. And without it, a story falls apart. After all, what use is a story if not everyone can relate to it? As a member of the LGBTQ community, I've always valued the feeling of inclusivity, the feeling that I could see myself in a character presented within the media. But I never felt like that character had to be a white, bisexual male for me to properly relate. This, to me, is the difference between diversity and inclusivity within the media. A character isn't relatable just because they're diverse, the same as a character isn't relatable because they're white or straight. This is something that industries have failed to recognize. There have been some successes, however, in achieving both diversity and inclusivity. One such example is Batwoman, a lesbian vigilante. DC's first lesbian superhero to headline a comic book transcended her original purpose of being created as a love interest for Batman in 1956. This was done in a somewhat ironic attempt to dissuade accusations of homosexual themes within the Batman comic books at the time. However, after being relaunched in 2006, her character has undergone massive changes, becoming the strong and independent character that readers know and love today. Another example of inclusion done right is the Muslim hero Kamala Khan, AKA Miss Marvel. She is now a firm fan favorite due to her youthful optimism and groundbreaking achievement for being the first Muslim character to headline a Marvel comic book. We feel included when we can relate to these characters on a deep personal level. 
It is the variety of their storytelling that makes them inclusive, the stories they're able to tell. These have ranged in their comics from Miss Marvel dealing with high school or various supervillain plots or Batwoman dealing with her father. The same goes for the X-Men. They're inclusive and popular because they have stood as a metaphor for the same feelings of exclusion and persecution that everyone's faced on at least some level for decades. It is the variety of their journeys and storytelling that makes them inclusive. They are not just defined by their differences, but instead, they are well-rounded and complex. This is a key factor that I believe publishers have missed in their recent attempts to modernize. Diversity is not a shortcut to inclusivity. One recent failed attempt at this shortcut took place in 2015. The comic book publisher Marvel decided to launch a new branding initiative called All New, All Different Marvel. This was coming right after a reboot that many fans felt was unnecessary and poorly executed. As such, enthusiasm was already lacking for this new initiative. But it only continued to drain as Marvel made what were, at least in my opinion, massive inclusivity blunders. These included swapping out characters rather than creating new, interesting, and unique ones with an inclusive range of backgrounds such as Ms. Marvel. Some examples would be they swapped out Iron Man for a teenage African-American girl, Hulk for an Asian teenager, and Thor with a woman suffering from cancer. These swap-ins or stories were all great individually and modernized the characters. But Marvel's decision to implement them all at once appeared as simply a wholesale sprinkling of diversification and alienated many fans from the power of these narratives. This was precisely the opposite of what Marvel had intended with this new initiative, and I believe it was due to reactions like mine. When reading comic books over the past couple years, I didn't feel included, I felt marginalized. To me, it seemed like Marvel was simply responding to criticism, creating diverse characters for the sake of diversity and taking the easy route. Despite all of this, the responsibility to embrace true, authentic inclusivity does not lie solely with the publishers. Writers and artists have the hardest role to play. It's their responsibility to create these inclusive characters and to write these storylines and not be afraid to push boundaries when it comes to reflecting their audience. And that's where it's the publisher's job. They've got to give these creative teams the freedom they need to explore these new perspectives. And then there's us the fans, the ones who read and buy comics. It's our responsibility to embrace this inclusivity. It's with our consumer power and our purchases that we can let the industry know when they're doing something right. We must embrace true, authentic inclusivity and accept that an industry must evolve to survive. And for comic books, that evolution is going to come in the form of characters. So many fans switched off or disconnected from the material sometimes without even trying it. And this was because they didn't like seeing their favorite characters being replaced. So please, writers, artists, editors, and of course, the fans, everyone in the industry we all love, embrace true, authentic inclusivity and be as brave as the heroes we aspire to be. Thank you.